conversation will still be about retail and indeed the challenges ahead. If there's any industry or sector that's faced these challenges head on in the last many decades, it's FMCG, that's fast moving consumer goods. In fact, for anyone who tracks the stock market, FMCG companies are actually considered the safest because they have the ability to ride out up cycles and down cycles. And that comes from a deep understanding of consumers, of specific cities, what makes a consumer tick, and what's most important for them at what point of time. So to talk about that and how to understand the new consumer, how to stay in touch with the old consumer, may I invite on stage the Managing Director and CEO of P&G India. Sir, if we could have you on. A round of applause, please, for Mr. Al Rajwani. Good afternoon, guys. Namaste. I want to start by thanking the IRF for inviting me to speak to you today about the age of changing consumerism and the changing consumer. Procter & Gamble is a company that's 178 years old. It's $65 billion in sales. We make in India through seven plants. We have 97% local production. We have 12 market-leading brands since 1989. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer, right? So I've been with Procter & Gamble 35 years, but I've only been in India one year. So I'm still trying to figure it out myself, right? So I'm going to give you some experience, but please take that in context. But let me reassure you, even though I've been in India only one year, I've been a Gujarati for 58 years. So I know a little bit about value. There is a saying, or when you meet someone, you ask them, you tell them, may you live in interesting times. The origin of this, I hear, is a Chinese curse. So when the Chinese wanted to curse you, they would say, may you live in interesting times, right? So you could say we are either really blessed or we are really cursed. I like to think we are really blessed, right? In the panel discussion this morning, I talked about 20,000 FMCG products being launched every year. Only 30 succeed. I want to say that again because it's shocking, right? 20,000, only 30 succeed. Not just products. Companies fail, right? And the hands is in the power of the disruptors. So we have to understand what the future holds if you're going to take advantage of it, right? India is a large size. The potential is even larger, but we have to understand what we are up about to win. The first question I'll ask you is, who's the boss? The consumer is the boss. This is a term that A.G. Lafley, our CEO, termed when he first became the CEO. He said, the consumer is the boss. And we are all here to please him or her, right? Now, the consumer is changing. They're digitizing and things are moving forward. So let's learn a little bit more about him or her, right? So my presentation is going to be broken in two parts. I'm going to first talk about how consumers are evolving. And this is pretty much public knowledge, so it won't be anything that startling. And then I'm going to talk about how do we win with the consumer, knowing what we know about them. The consumer today is hyper-connected, right? It took Apple 24 years to sell 60 million, 67 million Macs. It took them two years to sell 67 million iPads. You can see how rapidly this is going, right? And the path to purchase is no longer linear, right? There are many, many different paths to purchase. And the many influences that shape the shopper decisions today versus the past. In particular, the young, they have a mindset of, I'll find my own way. They have an amazing range of technologies available to them. They're connected socially, collaboratively, and creatively. They have a unique personality, online and offline. And sometimes I think online is when the true personalities come out. And they tend to learn actively from the peers and their communities. And they craft their own identities, and they want to make a difference. So let's take a little bit deeper look at these younger people, right? So the millennials are changing everything, right? Everything they touch is changing. And the millennials think their personal connections are very important.
But the next generation after millennials think personal connections are the success, are, are going to be critical to their success. And they don't put as much emphasis on formal education or professional skills. Now, many of these insights are from developed markets, but I can assure you they're going to be coming to India and they're already here with the younger educated people. 82% of youth have learned something on YouTube. 61% of youth have used a learning app. And 48% of youth have received a digital badge after successfully completing their training. The other thing about consumers is the new value is about convenience. And we talked about that a bit this morning, right? All of the innovation in the last five years, Facebook, Twitter, Uber, e-commerce, and I would even say WhatsApp, right, is all about convenience, right? They want convenience in shopping, and they want time-saving innovations, so they can do things they want to do, whether it's working harder, or gaming, or spending time chatting with their friends. They want time to do what they want to do. Now, this has created something, what I call the rise of the individual and the fall of the household. In the past, if you went into a household, the mother would most likely make the shopping decision, and you might find one shampoo that the whole household was using. Today, that's not the case. Everybody is making their own purchase decisions. It would not be unusual to have everybody have their own shampoo, or multiple shampoos, depending on what the moods are, or what they are about, right? So they have much higher expectations, and they want to create solutions versus waiting for solutions. So the consumer economy is transferred into what I call a network personal economy. It's a paradigm shift. So consumers are now partners, influencers, data brokers, investors, suppliers, inventors, and backers. All different consumers playing different roles. India, I would surmise, is positioned to transition the fastest into these network personal economies because of the prevalence of the smartphone. And we, looked, we talked about that this morning. So then let me summarize what we know about the consumer. They are hyper-connected. They have knowledge at their fingertips. The young are saying, I'll find my own way. The new value is convenience and the rise of the individual follow the household, right? Now, even as consumers are changing, the retail channel is also changing, right? And this just shows you the omnichannel channel development in several countries. So the retail landscape is changing. Now, every retailer has to make a strategic choice. Do I play online or do I not play online? Am I a pure play online or do I also do bricks and mortars, right? And there are numerous combinations coming up. Let me give you an interesting example. In the US, there's a chain called Macy's. I love shopping at Macy's because they have large sizes. And I'm a slightly large Gujarati person, right? People didn't like buying clothes online because what if it didn't fit? What if you bought a jacket or a shirt or a pair of pants and it did not fit? The trouble of returning it through FedEx or UPS was too much of a trouble, right? So Macy's came with a concept that says, you buy from us online, if you don't like it, you return it to our shop. Either to change it or get a refund, right? Or order something else online, right? This broke down the purchase barrier. So Macy's took their bricks and mortars and made it into an advantage because they have 630 stores all over the United States. I think we're going to see similar things happening in India, right? I'm not going to talk anymore about retail because it's going to be covered extensively in other sessions over the next few days. I just want to mention that we all have to be aware of what's going on, and we have to play a role in shaping the future. So how do we win? So let me start by saying the consumer, the boss, has never been static. There's always been changing societal values that are in play, right? Men playing a bigger role at home, women entering the workforce and playing a bigger role at the office, and it's all about sharing the Lord, right? Ideally, there should be sharing of the Lord in the household. I say the word share the Lord in one other meaning also. I think FMCG companies 
and retailers also need to share the load and collaborate. Because to win in the future is going to require tremendous collaboration between FMCG companies and retailers, whoever you are, whether you are bricks and mortars, online, doesn't matter who you are, we have to collaborate. So how do we win? My point of view is winning is the same way we won before, the same way, with maybe a bit more agility, because things are changing very fast, okay? It's all about something I call BOF. Anybody know what BOF means? Brutal obsession with fundamentals. Now, I was working for a French boss about five years ago, and I came up with this concept, and I told him, bof. He told me in French, bof means so-so. But that's not what it means here. Here it means brutal obsession with fundamentals, right? So what are the fundamentals that we need to go after? At Procter & Gamble, it's five Cs. Consumer segments. Whether it's a teenage girl, a teenage boy who's just trying to shave, a young mother, a professional, right? Understand the consumer segments. Since I came to India, I realized that people in the South have different needs than people in the North. Understanding that deeply is important. Understanding the fundamentals of every country, right? So we run India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and Nepal together. Every country has different fundamentals. Channels. Every channel has a different fundamental. Customer partners. All of us have to understand what drives our customers and what they're after. By customer, I mean retailers and categories, right? We run a variety of categories, from male grooming, to diapers, to femme care, to shampoos, to washing powder, right? And we have to understand the fundamentals out of all of this. So let me talk a bit more about how to win with fundamentals, how to win with both. First, you have to win the three moments of truth. The zero moment of truth is before the person even thinks about your product, buys your product, or comes into your store. What is the equity of your store? What is the equity of your brand in the person's mind? This has always been the case. People used to talk to each other word of mouth, but now they talk digitally. So the zero moment of truth has become even more important. The first moment of truth is when they're standing in front of the shelf, and they can choose a number of brands, and they decide to choose your brand. Or they decide to come to your store. Second moment of truth is when they use your product, what kind of experience do they get? Or in the case of the retailer, how was their shopping experience? Was the store clean? Did they find the product they wanted? Did they get a good impression of value? Was your staff courteous to them? If you win all three moments of truth, you get your most valuable customer or consumer. You get repeat, you get loyalty, and you get positive word of mouth. If you lose any moment of truth, you get the opposite. People say bad things about you and hurt you with other consumers. So winning the three moments of truth is critical. Okay. The other thing we need to do, guys, is simplify. I call this the menu paradox. Just like 20,000 FMCG products coming up every year, we made it very hard for people to shop. People are spending more time looking and less time buying. We need to make it easy for them to shop, easy for them to buy, right? If you cut your range by 25%, I guarantee you, you'll sell more. Many, many studies have been done in this area. So I talked about this, right? The, that winning the three moments of truth, if you win it, you get repeat customers, you get loyal customers. Simplifying, right? Many, many studies have been done that show that when people are confused, they actually buy less, right? Many retailers sometimes fall into the trap of becoming real estate agents. They sell the shelf to whoever pays them a good price. But that's the worst mistake you can do. If you put a product on your shelf that doesn't sell, it's dead space. It's taking up space, right? So I think you need to carefully look at your assortment. And like I said this morning, what is that extra assortment doing to your category growth? What is it doing to your profitability? What is it doing to your footfall? If it's not doing positive things, all of this, get it out. T2 ta. T2 ta. Okay, I see what you guys are saying, right? Ye kya bolta hai, Admi? 
उसका जन्म तंजनिया में वो स्वाहिली बोलता है या क्या नो थी टूटा मीन्स थी मीन्स ट्रेड इन ट्रेड इन यू कैन गेट कंज्यूमर्स कस्टमर्स इन टू योर कैटेगरीज द बेस्ट टाइम टू गेट पीपल इन टू योर कैटेगरीज इज पॉइंट ऑफ मार्केट एंट्री वेन डू दे फर्स्ट बाय योर प्रोडक्ट वेन डू दे फर्स्ट नीड योर प्रोडक्ट वेन दे फर्स्ट स्टार्ट शेविंग यू पुट अ जिलेट रेजर इन द हैंड एंड मोस्ट लाइकली दे विल स्टे विथ यू वेरी वेरी लॉन्ग राइट वेन दे फर्स्ट स्टार्ट मैं स्ट्रेडिंग फर्स्ट बेबी फॉर डायपर्स राइट कैच दैम at the point of market entry right if they're using cloth how can you get them into diapers how can you get them into fem care right trade in again is a joint responsibility once they into your category trade up trade up right give them a premium offering right if they're buying your baseline your flagship line give them a premium offering at a higher price usually at a higher margin right and then trade across trade across once they're buying shampoo give them a conditioner give them a serum a treatment right we call this adjacencies right if you stand in front of a shelf a beauty shelf in asia either skin care or shampoo you'll be amazed it is full of specialty type products that people are using and this is how you create growing categories higher margins premiumizations right if they're buying diapers from you sell them wipes right tea to tie is one other way to win explore categories right We used to sell female hair removal products in the male blaze and razor shelf. So women who wanted to shave would go to a Gillette shelf and buy a Gillette product. We came up with a product called Venus. It looks feminine, it's made for a woman, right? And lets her stand out and be herself. The category grew 140 index when we did this, right? Venus used to be 20% or or female hair removal used to be 20% of the male category now it's 70% because sitting in his own shelf he talks to women women find it approachable and by the way women don't want you to know what they are using to shave their legs so it gives them a little bit of privacy right the size of price in india if we get diapers to same penetration of either china or egypt 10x diapers can be a 4 to 5 billion dollar category skin care if we get it the same as china 10 billion dollar category right so in the next several years it's all about growing categories and reaping benefits as people become more middle class design for life stages right my favorite example is the young families are one of your most valuable customers because they spend a lot of money right when they come into your store put in front of them either a baby aisle or a baby wonderland a shopping shop What we find is when you put baby food, baby clothes, bibs, baby shampoo, baby oil, cribs, strollers, the diaper category grows. But all these other categories explode, and all of these are much higher margins, right? So designing for life stages and capturing consumers as they come into your store, again, is a good way to grow your category, your overall category. Innovate or become obsolete. high innovation categories grow four times as much as low innovation categories high innovation categories grow eight times as much as zero innovation categories so if you're not innovating either in product or in form in features in packaging right if you're not delighting your consumers on an ongoing basis they will not stay with you right if you not try gillette flexball guys i'm trying to sell a few cases also huh? go buy philip gillette flexball you'll be delighted because it hugs your face and gives you a fantastic shave now once they come to your store make it count stop them in front of your categories hold them close the sale right tools like beauty consultants tools like category management solutions tools like touch and feel units tools like in store demonstrations right all of these help to close a sale now the person is in your shop right it's up to you to get the maximum value out of that person right and all of these tools greatly help so to summarize guys we've now understood the consumer and what's driving him or her very connected etc and i hope i gave you some ideas for how to win with the consumer right 
And I'm telling you, it's all about both. Brutal obsession with fundamentals, right? And let me share with you my final slide. And I call this my killer slide. All of us need to have a corporate heart. What do I mean by that? At PNG, we have a CSR program called Shiksha, been going on for 12 years. We've built or enabled a thousand schools and put a million children in need through these schools. Sustainability, guys. In the short term, all of us living together on this earth, in the short term, there's no option to leave this earth. We're all here together, right? Let's make sure we make it sustainable, right? So things like recycling, right? In our manufacturing plants, 99.4% of manufacturing waste is contained within the plants. As of the end of this calendar year, it's going to be 100%. So you're not adding a load to your landfills, right? Diversity and inclusion. At Procter & Gamble, 30% of our employees are female. 50% of our new hires are female. 40% of my leadership team is female, right? So why do we do CSR? Why do we do sustainability? Why do we focus on diversity? It's the right thing to do, and it's the right thing for business, guys. People reward you for this. They appreciate you for this. They think you're a good citizen, and they will buy your products if you do all of this. So I hope I've given you a few ideas, guys, to think over, right, in the short time that I had, and now I'll open up for any questions. Thank you very much.